Hello, I'm 8-Bit Music Theory. You may remember me from such instructional YouTube videos as Learning Modes for Mother's Day and You're Telling Me There's a Sharp 11? I'm here today to talk to you about how to write a song from the Mega Man 2 soundtrack. Let's get started. Now I know you've all been aching for a step-by-step -step instructional guide on how to write a song from the Mega Man 2 soundtrack, but worry not, for your prayers have been answered. First off, we need a tempo, so make sure to choose a tempo that's either 180 or 150 beats per minute. Next, we need a key. Now, you can write in any key you wish, as long as it's minor, of course, but generally speaking, the more sharps and flats, the better. B-flat minor? Perfect. C minor? That'll do. G major? <laughs> oh, okay, but only for you, Crash Man Course. Fun fact, coming in hot, the Crash Man stage music is the only one of composer Takeshi Tataishi's first pass of songs to make the cut into the final game. Tataishi stated in a 2013 interview that his original attempts at scoring the game sounded similar to Crash Man's music, but were rejected as being too cute and not cool enough. Kinda weird to think of what the game would be like if all of the music was this cheerful. We have a key and a tempo. Now, we just need a chord progression to lay down a foundation. Make no mistake, every conceivable avenue of harmonic expression is open to you. You can use a 1 flat 7 1 vamp, But you don't have to stick with this exact chord progression all of the time. Let your creativity flow a little here, switch it up a bit. How about moving to the flat 6 chord before you move to the flat 7 chord? Of course, I'm just poking fun here. Yes, these progressions are pretty ubiquitous throughout the soundtrack, but Tataishi was tasked to write cool music, and he approached the soundtrack as a rock musician rather than a classical composer. The flat 7 to 1 and flat 6 flat 7 to 1 in a minor key is about as common a cadence as you could find in rock music, and so it served Tataishi's needs nicely. Plus, there is a little more harmonic variation than I give the soundtrack credit for. Check out how Tataishi uses a 5-7 chord in first inversion to chromatically fill in that flat 7 to 1 bass line. <laughs> Look at how he introduced the flat 2 chord, borrowed from the parallel Phrygian scale, for a splash of color like in Woodman and Dr. Wily's stages. So you have a chord progression all figured out, but how do we make music out of that? Well, since it's a Mega Man 2 song, it's gotta have a funky bass line. That NES sound card could only produce four noises simultaneously, giving us two pulse wave channels, usually used for the melody line and counter line, a triangle wave channel, usually used for the bass line, and a noise channel used for percussion. With only three melodic voices to work with, the bass couldn't afford not to be kick-ass. 
If you chose the 180 BPM option earlier, you're going to want to give the bass this galloping rhythmic figure. It's not exactly funky per se, but this driving rhythm at such a fast tempo lends a certain intensity to the music, which is very important when you're scoring a game about fighting killer robots. If you chose the 150 BPM option, you'll want something considerably funkier. What makes a bass line funky? <laughs> you know, and that's the funk. Well, we can see some examples of funk bass techniques scattered throughout the soundtrack, like the Flashman stage's bass line where a steady eighth note pattern alternates between staccato downbeats and tenuto upbeats. <laughs> Or in Crashman's bass line, where we have this chromatic octave walking up to the tonic with the staccato top notes mimicking a slap bass sound. You know, and there you go, you got your basic funk formula there. Usually though, we get the more energetic type of funky bass line dripping with 16th note syncopation. Syncopation is the rhythmic dissonance created by emphasizing offbeat notes rather than notes found on the beat, and it's the most important factor in creating energetic music. Check out how Metal Man's and Quick Man's stages both use the 16th note rhythm to anticipate the third beat of each bar. <laughs> The boss battle theme's bass line features even more syncopation to lock into the rhythm of the melody. This is actually a really good example of another aspect of Mega Man 2's bass lines, incorporating the blues scale. The blues scale is the closest approximation we can get to of what notes sound bluesy without veering into microtonal territory, specifically with the flattened third, fifth, and seventh. These can be in direct contrast to the natural 3rd, 5th, or 7th in the underlying harmony, or they can be used as a chromatic approach tone to give a line a bluesy edge. Mega Man 2's soundtrack goes for the latter, with the chromatic note being used to fill in the gap between the natural 4th and 5th in the bass lines of the stage select and boss battle themes. <laughs> while the bass line in the credits music shows us the use of the flat 7 and flat 3rd in a major key. There is one example of the former method, where the blue notes simply clash against the notes found in the harmony in Crashman's stage theme. Check out the melodies flat 3rd and flat 7 used over a very clear outline of a regular G major chord. Alright, so we have our bluesy, funky bass line and our harmonic backdrop. Now for the most important element, the melody. This will definitely be the hardest part of the Mega Man 2 songwriting process as it's key to have a catchy melody that the player won't mind listening to over and over and over again as they fall into the stupid pit 1000 freaking times! <clears throat> uh, hypothetically, of course. In all seriousness, each melody on the soundtrack seems to focus primarily on memorability, with melodies that stick to outlining the basic chord tones of each changing chord in repetitive patterns. <laughs> This makes perfect sense, since with only three available voices, the melody can't really afford to stretch too far away from basic chord tones without obscuring what the harmony is actually supposed to be. 
but you don't win over the ears of a whole generation of kids with just basic chord tones alone. No, of course not. What really makes these melodies great is the rhythmic energy. The key to this sort of musical hype machine is an emphasis on the offbeat. Check out Dr. Wily's Castle, for instance. Notice how the melody starts and ends each phrase on the offbeat, with every other phrase hammering home only offbeats. The only time we get a strong downbeat in this section is when it lands on the raised 6th, A sharp, giving us some modal intrigue to offset the rhythmic resolution. Another great example is the beginning of Airman's stage theme, which creates rhythmic and melodic tension with this chromatically descending stream of offbeats. Again, when it does land on a downbeat, it gives us a nice colorful chord tone, in this case the major 7th of the underlying G flat chord, to maintain some musical energy. Going back to the idea of syncopation I mentioned earlier, we can see one of the most important ways that this soundtrack creates energy rhythmically, with the anticipation of the next chord in the progression. What I mean is that the downbeat of a bar where a chord changes will be moved back half a beat or even a sixteenth note to the bar before and held over the bar line. This push to get to the next chord faster than what is categorically demanded by our slimy lizard brains makes the music exciting for some reason. I don't know why it works, I just know that it does. Check out all these examples. Now compare that to the stage clear theme without this anticipation. The melody and the bass make up two of the NES's three available voices, so what about the third? This part's pretty simple actually. You can either harmonize the melody in thirds, you can express the harmony with a syncopated 16th note counterline that outlines the underlying chord progression like so. You all now know how to compose music for one specific game on a console and genre that hasn't really been relevant in like 20 years. You're welcome. If you want more hot tips like these, don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to get the sheet music you saw on screen here, get these videos early, make a suggestion for a video topic, or just support the channel, feel free to check out my Patreon. If you have any questions, feel free to tweet me at 8BitMusicTheory, and thank you all so much for watching. See you in the next one.